is the law bad? Well, this is where Christians get into this theology of what we might call law and gospel, right? There's so much that could be said about this and there's so much I just do not have time to say. So I, I wanna just put it this way as a starting point for thinking, not an ending point, but a starting point. Think of law this way. I want to. I want. I want us to try to think of law existentially for a moment on a really big cosmic level. I was. This is kind of a dumb story to share, but I'm just going to go there. I was. I was. I, I was depressed a couple weeks ago. I was having a bad time. I felt really bad physically. I don't know if you ever feel like this. You're just. You're feeling bad physically. You're feeling bad mentally. And I was getting ready for bed, and I looked at myself in my bathroom mirror, and I actually thought this thought. I looked at myself, and I was like this is as ugly as I have ever looked. <laughs> like literally right now, I am at the peak low of my ugliness, like as a human being, like just physically, I just felt like, like that feeling of just not measuring up, okay? So in that sense, or in the sense of say like mountain climbing, of trying to climb a mountain and being defeated by the mountain, the mountain is too big. I've tried to climb Mount Adams two times. I have failed both times for different reasons. One time I was sick, and the other time I got caught in this cloud, right? I couldn't see two feet in front of me, and I was afraid, and I, I, I actually got lost a little bit near the peak of the mountain, and I came down, right? It wasn't so much there that I was ugly or that I had some kind of moral failure, right? It was just that I saw myself in that moment as inadequate. I wasn't enough, right? And we have so many experiences like that in life, whether it's with our own physicality or maybe it's like grades in school, or you could even think of it like sports. Like if you're on a team like basketball or football, one team wins and the other team loses, right? And when you lose, you see that you did not measure up. You weren't good enough. There's no way around that. You know, you can't go back in the locker room. It's kind of, you know, the coach will always be like, well, you know, we really put our hearts out there today and this was a moral victory. And you know, it's like, no, there's no moral victory. You lost, right? And at some point as, a, as an athlete, you have to come to terms with that. It's not like, well, we really won in our hearts, but you know, we, we didn't quite, you know, it's like, no, you lost. That sense of losing, that sense of inadequacy, that sense of just being confronted with something that's so much bigger than you that you can never really be there, right? You could think of that existentially as law. That's what the law is, right? And in fact, if we fast forward to the New Testament, to a book like Galatians, when an author there named Paul is talking about the law in this exact sense, he's like, that's exactly what the law is. The law, but does that mean the law was bad? Should God just never have given us the law? No, Paul says, God had to give us the law. The law was, the law was fine. The law showed us some things. He says, he uses this language of a teacher. Like the law was a teacher. The law taught us some things about God. On the cross, where Jesus dies, this is getting further in our story, but I'm gonna go there. We see both the law and the gospel, the good news of God's saving power, in play at the same time. The gospel says the law is real, the law was right, but the law is not the end of the story. The law is not God's final word for humanity in the Christian vision, no. The gospel is something else. The gospel invokes concepts like grace, grace that no one could ever earn. And this is something that all Christians have believed always, that we just can't really overcome this sense of law in our lives, this sense of dysfunction through just trying really hard to be better. I cannot overcome that sense of ugliness that I experienced that day in front of the mirror merely by like running a lot and exercising and trying to make my hair better and trying to wear different clothes. Like it just kind of won't ever really fundamentally work. And in fact, my body will break down and I'll die. That's the law, that's death, right? But there's something else, right? There's something beyond this. There's some calling out of this place and a kind of a righteousness or a purity and a wholeness that God offers that in fact makes law totally powerless to define who we are in the end before God. An idea like that is gospel. But these ideas, even though they are opposed and they're at these two polarities, they also interact with each other. I mean, we still experience the you know, law in, in, in one sense in our lives all the time in a very good sense. It was good that I turned back on that mountain. I might have died up there. Like I needed to come back to my family, you know? I realized I was inadequate, right? And Christians still operate in their lives with, with rules, with community norms, right? and my community and my church and all the people that I'm accountable to, they help me you know, stick to scripture and stick to those norms. So in a sense, you could say that that's kind of like law operating at the same time. And when Jesus dies on the cross, you know, sin is being, sin is being shown for what it is, something ugly and horrible and that requires a great sacrifice to make it right. That's the law. 
But then there's also the resurrection for Christians, right? So it's not, so death is not the final word. Law is not the final word. There's a little bit of gospel in the law and there's a little bit of law in the gospel. And so the, the categories aren't quite as clean as sometimes we might think. So this is a very complicated topic for Christians, one that's worth thinking about as we journey through the Bible together. Thank you.